What is up guys, it is Nick. We are back to do the lineup review. This was supposed to go up yesterday, but uh, I had some issues. It recorded a blank screen. It had my voice and everything. It just recorded a blank screen. Not entirely sure why, but uh, let us hop into this. So the recap and the breakdown video will go up on the same day. So here is my cash lineup on FanDuel. People were complaining about the FanDuel lineup builder because in cash, point I'm going to say from now on in every single video that's related to a lineup is that it's not about the lineup I create, it's about the process and the thought process behind the lineup and the people that I suggest. It may, you know, I may suggest a play that sucks, but I may suggest a play that's good. We had a gambit of bad plays and good plays this week, and plays, you know, I didn't actually suggest. That sucked, like Tyreek Hill. So I played Tyreek Hill over here because I wanted Gio Bernard over here instead of Corey Clement. So I plugged in Geo, and I didn't have enough to continue to have Michael Thomas. So I had to get off of Michael Thomas. So I went to Tyreek Hill because I was like, well, Tyreek Hill will probably be chalk, which he was at 40%. Michael Thomas was also chalk at 40%. But I didn't think I would, I would lose by over 11 points to Michael Thomas, 11.3 points to be exact. And somehow I survived the 60% Al Alvin Kamara chalk and the 32% Todd Gurley chalk, which, all, both, which scored 26 and 22 points. I have no idea how I survived this week and actually cashed on FanDuel, but I did. I got on to Matty Ice, who put up 40 points with his five touchdowns. Forced in Jordan Howard for his touchdown equity uh, was really all that was for me. Which, it had nothing to do with the coach speak about getting him more carries or anything like that even though that was nice on FanDuel it was just simply about touchdown equity he had some of the higher touchdown equity for a running back and that's why I put him in Gio Bernard became my favorite play on Sunday when the Bengals only had two active running backs I believe Gio Bernard saw like 95% of the running back snaps and 100% of the touches I think something crazy like that uh Tyreek we went over that that just was horrible Julio Jones, I, it wasn't too bad. He almost got the 100-yard bonus on DraftKings, which we'll talk about. He just can't find the end zone. I'll probably play him again this week, maybe not in cash, but I'll play him again in, in a GPP, probably on DraftKings. I'll play a GPP with Julio. Eventually, one week, every year, Julio erupts, and I think this year he might erupt two or three times. It's just a matter of... If he catches a touchdown week one, that's an eruption week. Uh, but we're just kind of waiting on the touchdown regression. It's going to come. He He's not going to, you know, get three touchdowns every year forever uh, unless they're just stupid. I, I get what they're doing. The, he gets doubled and triple teamed in the end zone. I mean, it's hard to get him the ball, so why throw it there when you got other guys on one-on-one -on -one coverage? I get it, but there were a couple times where Julio was one-on-one -on -one and they didn't even look his way, so... They're not even, like, doing a progression route. They're not like, okay, here. They're not having Matt Ryan go, oh, my, okay, here we go. Julio, check Julio. If he's got one-on-one -on -one coverage, make him your first read. If he doesn't have one-on-one -on -one coverage, okay, go somewhere else with your first read. No, I think Julio in the red zone is, like, option three or four through Matt Ryan's progressions because he doesn't always look his way. Play I got on, really happy about, was Will Fuller. I told you guys in the betting video to bet the over 57 and a half yards for Will Fuller. He put up 101, one of the easiest bets. One of the easiest bets I've made other than the Chris Godwin over three receptions last night that I told you guys to bet when on the Monday Night Football video. That that was such an easy bet. It was a joke. Um, he was a better DraftKings play than he was a FanDuel play because he hit the 100-yard bonus. Uh, he had potential for such a bigger day, too. Watson missed him on a 60-yard bomb, and he was peppered with targets all day and only ha hauled in five of them. He could have had an enormous day, but uh, I'll take the day from him that I got and move on. Ebron put up 5.8 points. Uh, Lat Murray 
put up five points. I still think this was the correct process play. I would play him 100% again every single time the Vikings played the Bills, especially at home, at 5,200 on FanDuel. I would play him literally 100% of the time. He just had bad game script. He he helped trying to get to value with the five receptions for 30 yards. Uh, obviously, just un unable to get there. Not a huge deal, but... Uh, you know, I, I I like I like I understand what happened, and it is not a big deal. I, I'm not I'm not concerned about it. Um, Lat Murray still still going to be a great play if he uh, if Dalvin Cook does sit. It looks like he they're consider. It looks like he um my gosh, let me get my words together. It looks like Dalvin Cook is looking like he's going to sit. Um, so I'm not entirely sure. Not entirely sure. We'll talk about it in the in the first look video about Lat Murray if Dalvin Cook does sit. But then I had the Cowboys defense had 100% Cowboys defense. Two points, whatever. They got two sacks. I thought they'd get a few more. Um, didn't exactly counter the Bears chalk defense, which which was an issue. It almost forced a non-cash on DraftKings. Let's, so let's hop over there now. So this was the DraftKings lineup. This is in the two. This is ownership in the $250 single entry double up. Um, I didn't think I'd cash. We got a huge surge at the end of the day with this lineup to really catapult us to a chance to cash. So we had Matt Ryan over here. He had 43.16 DK points. He was a little higher owned over here. It was close to 29%. Corey Clement put up 10 points. It was whatever. I hated Corey Clement, but I wanted the value so I could fit in Julio and Thomas. And it worked out. He scored 10 about two points below value, but 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 it worked out. I mean, it wasn't horrible. Lat Murray over here was all right with his eight points, 8.1 points. People did fade him over here in the high dollar single entry double ups um, to the tune of 54%. Uh, I thought for sure I was cooked when he was only 46% in, 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 in this double up. Um, like I said, it, I still think it was the correct process play. 8.1 is not horrible. He was kind of expensive. You could have just got up to Kareem Hunt, who put two into the end zone. But I have real no issues with my Lat Murray play. Will Fuller, like I said, came up huge over here. Only 26%. 24.1 DK points. He had the 101 receiving yards on five receptions and that TD. Julio gets those four more yards. So it, so here's the thing. If Julio gets one more catch for four yards, that's the minimum to get the 100-yard bonus, he gets 4.4 more points, which puts him at 19. And then is really anybody saying that they're super disappointed with a 19-point week from Julio? No. So I don't know. 14.6, obviously not what you want. But at 62.5%, he really didn't kill you in your cash games. It really wasn't that big of a deal. Michael Thomas, 25.9%. He got there in late into the over, into overtime, and uh, I think he caught three balls for like 30 yards in overtime, which really helped out. Got him the 100-yard bonus. It got him like 10 extra points. Uh, Eric Ebron caught three passes for like 20-something, like 21 yards on the final Colts drive. That was huge. Gio got that touchdown early and then caught some balls along the way to get to 19.6, which was really the top the best value the best play on my team between him and will fuller will fuller and geo were my two best plays and they came in at low ownership i don't know why geo was only 32 percent like i don't get who people played over geo like like were you playing tevin coleman over g like i don't know i don't know who people were playing were fading lat murray and geo for other than alvin kamara like i get alvin kamara but who are you fading these two for? I know Kareem Hunt came in at 30%, but why? I would have faded Corey, Corey Clement before I faded Lat Murray or Gio Bernard. Like, I understand Lat Murray, I guess it was a good fade by people because Lat Murray sucked. But if that game win is scheduled, Lat Murray absolutely smashes. Look at what he did in a game where he really was game scripted out. He's not a great receiving back. He did catch five balls, but he's not a great receiving back. And so... Just imagine if that game would have blown out they, the other way. He, he would have had touchdowns. It, it, he, I just, I don't know. I don't know what people were fading. Like, why you would fade Lat Murray and Gio Bernard. Um, and then the Cowboys defense, it was chalk in the top dollar, in the high dollar cash game, so it didn't really matter. I mean, it mattered some. Uh, but this is why I always talk about not paying up for quarterback. 
Okay, I'm gonna compare, like, I'm gonna show you this lineup. So this is, let's see, one of these has, there we go, here we go. So this guy has Patrick Mahomes, who put up 28 points. He hit value, he hit, he, he, uh, he exceeded value, but the rest of his team was, it wasn't as limited because of the week, because of Tyler Boyd and Calvin Ridley, it wasn't the normal week, but my point is going to be here. His team was limited to a certain extent because he had to play a guy who was 3,700. His team is almost identical to mine. He has Kareem Hunt over, um, Kareem Hunt over, uh, the, the, the Lat Murray. And he has Tyler Boyd instead of Will Fuller. It was Mahomes, Hunt, and, and Boyd over Ryan, Lat Murray, and, um, Will Fuller, and every week, every week, 100 out of 100 weeks, I'm going to take Will Fuller over Tyler Boyd at the same price, and that's essentially what you did. It was a 2v2 swap, essentially, Mahomes and Boyd for Ryan and Fuller, and at quarterback, your opportunity cost is not as big as your opportunity cost at wide receiver. If Tyler Boyd is terrible and Mahomes puts up 28 points, the the process behind it is that you lost out on points. Yeah, well, yeah, Patrick Mahomes met value. He hit 4x value. But there are going to be other quarterbacks that hit 4x value. You score your most points from the wide receiver positions. I understand that Matt Ryan scored 42 points and Drew Brees scored like 40 points too. But on a normal week, on a normal week, 80%, 85 even 90 sometimes it's 100 but like 85 to 90% on a normal week do not have a quarterback score in the 40s. And so the issue becomes is that how much of an opportunity cost are you giving up to have Patrick Mahomes? This week, it wasn't that bad because Tyler Boyd was a value play. Calvin Ridley was a value play. I told you guys to play Calvin Ridley. I wish I would have taken my own advice. But uh, one guy who asked me questions on Twitter, he, he played Calvin Ridley. He had a really nice week. Um... I think he played, he played like my old lineup. It was like, um, it was Ryan, Clement, Kamara, Ridley, Julio, Thomas, uh, Ebron, Geo, and the Cowboys D or something. I forget. I think that was it. I think that was it. Um, or something close to that. No, it couldn't have been that. He was off of Julio. It was Will Fuller instead of Julio. Um, and he, he, he put up like 180 or one, or like 200 points this week, um, in, in his cash game. So that, that was really cool, uh, that he listened to me and played Wolf, or played, uh, uh, Julio, or, oh my gosh, played Calvin Ridley. He went off a, he, he was afraid of the Marcus Lattimore matchup, so he faded Julio and went with Calvin Ridley, which was kind of what I was talking about, but Calvin Ridley is the number two option in that offense now. And uh, we'll talk about it in the in the regular video, but that's gonna do it for the recap video. It was another week. I'm seven and zero on DraftKings now. Uh, that includes the Monday through Thursday or the Thursday through Monday slate every week, in the main slate, and one really big, essentially ca double cash game lineup ran on week one. Um, so technically, if you don't want to count that one, it's six and zero on DraftKings and three and zero on FanDuel. I only play the main slate on FanDuel. Um, all the results are always up on my Twitter if you want to look at them. Um, it, sh uh, it shows the lineups and, and the record. Um, so yeah, guys, that's going to do it for, for this episode. Check back later tonight. We should have the video up for the early week breakdown. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys then. Peace out.